All right, I got this motor on the engine hoist with a scale. All the weight off the motor, it's just dangling. What do you guys think is the weight of this thing? As it sits, there's no transmission on it, but it's fully dressed, got the wire harness on it. What do you guys think? Take a guess. Here we go, let's take a look. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel on uh, another exciting episode of this cool build. One of the things that I've been working on uh, as I get ready to put the engine and trans pack package back in the car so I can fit the headers, or start to fabricate and mock up the, the exhaust headers is the ECU electronics. So let me show you what I've been up to here. So this motor package has uh, a factory dual ECU setup. There's a master and a slave. Got one there, one there. Uh, they're the exact same part number on both, but one is the master, and I don't know which is which. So when I got this, when I got this setup, bought just the engine trans and uh, ECU as a package deal, I don't know which goes to what. I do know that the the master ECU goes in the passenger side, the right-hand side of the vehicle, and the slave on the left-hand side. I don't know if it makes a difference. If you flip-flop the ECUs in the harness, and the wiring harness, no idea. I think, based on a clue, this ECU has an extra label on it. This might be the master, uh, if I were to guess. Again, no idea. If anybody knows or if it matters which side of the harness these ECUs gets plugged into, let me know in the comments below. But anyways, as you saw, I fabricated up uh, some of these mounts um, where the ECU will just slide into. Now the cool thing on these is there were four holes here. One here, here, and then two at the back. And uh, they were not tapped, but they, the holes were the perfect size for uh, an M5 drill tap. So I just tapped the holes and uh, used the holes as a way to mount the ECU to, to the uh, ECU holder here. And then I made up, again, uh, some covers and then just wrinkled powder coat on top. So those covers will, will go in place. Same on this side. This one I've already got bolted down. So this ECU is, is bolted to the bracket that I made up and then this cover will go on. And then what I did was, I think I've got this one done already, yeah. This one. I've got four holes in the back and then those four holes will line up over here on the chassis. This is where I'm thinking of putting these ECUs. Down here on the lower side of the firewall, 
And on the other side, I'll give some spacing and then mount that ECU there with the plug facing to the left. And then those will be low, out of the way, away from heat sources, and I think we'll be good. As you can see, these computers have some um, tarnish on them. They've been in the elements. In fact, in the R8 and the Huracan, these ECUs sit over the rear, uh, rear tires in the fender area. So they're not in direct uh, elements, but certainly they're exposed to moisture and, and dust and, and so forth. So I think those will be pretty good right uh, where I showed you. So uh, I'm going to get these mounted in and then we'll go on to the next thing. Here's the original OEM header, uh, exhaust header, and again, one side of the car. I think this is, yep, this is the left side of the engine. Uh, basically, the design of my header flange, I replicated kind of what the Audi, and Audi factory, Volkswagen factory, <laughs> basically, uh, did here. So you can see the angled feet. Um, you can see where the studs mount up with the nuts. It's angled there as well. Pretty thin uh, bit of material. This looks to be maybe cast iron. Um, but I basically replicated. In fact, what I did to design, I just put a piece of paper, cardboard on this, traced it took measurements out, so that was the basis for my original CAD design. And then a little bit of uh, refinement, and away we go. Unfortunately, this header will not fit uh, in the car at all. It's just too big. Um, it does have built-in catalytic converters uh, as well. I think the beginning of the cat is like right here, and then the other side end of the cat is right here. So it's about a four or five inch cat that's in there. It's got a piece of stainless flex uh, end on there. It's got this really nice uh, heat shielding. I forget what this is called, but um, this, this definitely uh, shields a lot of the heat out of the engine bay. And I've got to figure out what I'm going to do for heat shielding on my uh, header design once I get it completed. It's a big heavy piece, uh, factory headers that came with the engine package. And like I said, uh, I just designed the header flanges uh, based on the original design. So let's take a look at that. So here we are back in my favorite application, Fusion 360. And like I mentioned, I took the, uh, the trace drawing I did using the OEM flange and took a few measurements with a pair of calipers and then recreated it here in that sketch. Uh, and that was the hardest part in extruding this. That was the easy part. So this is the finished model of the flange, the header flange. And a couple of features in here that are key that I showed on the OEM flange are these angled feet that you see here. That's how this uh, mounts to the side of the head, wedges down in and secures through on, a, on I think six studs that uh, hold it in place. So uh, I had to replicate these features on my little mill uh, to grind those off. So I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. And then I didn't stop there. I figured out, oh, let me see if I can model up some headers. I was just playing around. This was long before the kit arrived, so I was bored. Uh, and you can see here, a really neat tool. You can take your flange and just model up uh, some exhaust headers just to get an idea of, of what your runners might look like. So anyway, pretty cool. And uh, let's get back to building this thing. So as I mentioned, I had these flanges laser cut and the quality of the laser cut is just incredible. Um, the precision, uh, the quality, I did have to grind some slag off the back just a little bit in a few spots, uh, but in general, out of the box, uh, the laser cut quality of this is what you might expect. It's precision, there's no oxidation at all on this. Uh, it's just a really nice job. I think. I think I paid a couple hundred bucks to have a pair of these cut, including the material. So well worth it, uh, in my opinion. I did try to cut out a pair. As you know, I love to use my plasma table. 
Um, I did try using a piece of quarter inch stainless steel um, with my Hypertherm 45 XP cutter. It did okay, um, but as you can see, the finish is, is oxidized because I had no shielding gas or anything when I cut these. So this would require some cleanup. Not to mention, it is just quarter inch. Um, and ideally for these flanges, you want something 3 eighths in, inch or thicker. Again, just to prevent warpage since, again, there's not a lot to this flange. <laughs> not a lot to the design uh, at all to keep weight down uh, and so forth. So I'm not going to use these. Again, I cut these on my table. Um, and like I said, I ended up going with the laser cut 3 eighths inch stainless. Uh, it's just, I think it's just going to come out. Um, a lot better uh, in the end. Better quality products, uh, end result, um, and again with the thicker it'll, it'll warp a heck of a lot less than maybe a quarter inch uh, wood as well. Here's how I machined those feet on the uh, flanges that you can see here. Again, the laser cutting just squared them off and then I had to cut these angles in each of these feet. So. Again, not a hard process. Uh, fortunately, I had the, a little mill machine to do this. But uh, here you can see, uh, this is the upper side where the bolt studs, the studs and nuts uh, bolt into. So, and just slowly but surely, piece by piece, ground uh, this off. Key tip here, don't use high speed steel on uh, stainless steel. It'll just rip right through them. So use carbide tips and it'll last a lot longer. All right, we're gonna get started on fabricating the exhaust headers for this 5.2 liter V10. This is actually something I started long before I got the kit, really after I picked up the motor almost a year and a half ago now, the motor trans, uh, the electronics that came with it, the ECUs and so forth. So let me show you where I'm at and where we're gonna get started uh, on this design. Now I've never done this before, I've never built exhaust headers at all so this is going to be a learning process for sure um, i've already started to play a little bit with the uh, ice engine works modeling blocks that i'll show you as well to model up i've seen and heard a lot of great things about this kit it's a, it's pricey it's expensive kit i don't know that i'll ever use it again um, i might end up selling the kit after i'm done with it but I think it's sure to save me a lot of headaches and time and material and cost in building these things uh, with that ICE Engine Works kit. But let me show you what I have here and then we'll, we'll just go from there. I actually printed up a pair of flanges uh, that I could use to test fit and really optimize and make sure it was right before I cut uh, some expensive stainless steel. Um, you know, given that they don't give this stuff away and I wanted to minimize any screw ups. So uh, some have asked in a previous video where I showed these 3D printed uh, flanges. These, this is actually uh, done in two pieces. If you look closely, there's a seam right here in the middle that I actually epoxied together. Um, this is just PLA plastic. Epoxies together really nice and that's a really strong joint. Uh, but I printed it in two halves and then glued it together to make this flange. Um, I made this, this is three quarter inch steel that you see here. Um, this is what I'll use I'll, when I start to weld this up for the final time. I'll just bolt this flange down all the way, tighten it up so that this will act as number one, a heat sink to prevent warpage, any warpage of this 3 8 inch stainless steel, um, but also is a nice heavy piece so that when I build up the header, um, it won't tip or anything like that. So that was pretty easy. I just drilled some holes and then tapped the holes. I think these are eight millimeter um, taps, just bolts and taps that I did there. Um, so that should work out nice. And the way I'm gonna do this is, I'm just gonna cut these uh, one inch pieces of one and three quarter inch stainless steel. This is uh, 304L uh, stainless steel. And then I will tack weld one 
for each cylinder and then the ice engine works modeling kit will begin right here um, and then I'll build off that you'll see that when I when I get to that part there's been some comments about using uh, 321 stainless steel which supposedly well it is uh, better for high heat applications some of the research I've done number one is like three to four times the cost of the same diameter 308 stainless steel so it gets expensive really fast and given this is the first time I'm doing this there's a chance I'm gonna screw up so last thing I want to do is waste expensive 321 stainless steel um, and the 321 really is for high heat applications so if it was turbocharged obviously you'd want you'd want that it's a better application for normally aspirated that that I'm planning just to keep normally aspirated set up on this motor uh, the 304 L should be fine uh, honestly the flange is 304 uh, the collector which I'll show you in a moment is 304 as well as uh, the piping here as well so I'm just gonna stick with 304 L um, given it's it's pretty standard it's uh, it's 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 priced right and again if I screw up I don't have to worry about wasting expensive 321 stainless mandrel bends. Uh, super, super expensive. All right, I'm over here at the engine and let me show you how this uh, flange mates up to the engine. As I mentioned, it's got these angled feet, both top and bottom side of the flange. So it's actually pretty ingenious. So um, in fact, I didn't even have to unbolt these lower pieces they just they just stayed when I took the original OEM headers off from the motor um, but I've got the gasket in there I've got new set of gaskets in this but I just left the original there just for fitting purposes when I model this up but essentially what you do is you just slide your header your lower header uh, the feet into position and then just slide up uh, the upper side of the flange put a couple bolts in there I've got a couple here just to uh, hold it in place. I've got new new copper nuts as well that I'll be using. Um, but there you have it. What is that? Three, six, six nuts holding this on, and, and you're in. You're done. So uh, this will be key to have in place as I'm modeling this out with the modeling blocks. Again, I'm going to have to put the engine in the car do this so that I can uh, make sure I'm clearing all the chassis frame rails and so forth when I build out the design of this header. Um, the other thing is there is a heat shield that that goes here on the upper end of the head. I took it off just to get it out of the way. In fact, I think I've got it, one of them over here. Yeah, here's, I got it labeled. Here's the left side heat shield. So this simply bolts right there and then uh, it'll protect heat from the from the head up here so I left those off just to keep them out of the way while I'm while I'm modeling and fabricating this this setup all right over here I've got some uh, 304 stainless tubing and piping some sample parts that I purchased in addition to the two exhaust or header collectors that I bought so let me show you these these are a couple of the collectors and let me show you what this looks like so again I picked these up online again man as you can imagine of manufacturing and building these is a is a is a work of art and takes a lot of practice so I rather than building these myself I just picked these up um, again online I think stainlessheaders.com had them three quarter inch tubes and you'll see the uh, the header tubes that I'll build will simply, there's a, a slip fit at the end of these. Quality of the welding work on this is awesome. Um, even on the inside, there's a nice uh, aero spike in there to help with the flow of the exhaust gases. It's really, really nice. Uh, nicely crafted, handcrafted piece. So I'm pretty excited about these. Um, and then, of course, the rest of the exhaust system will bolt up or weld, I'll weld up to this end at the other end of the collector. So I've got a couple of those, as you can see, hit it, sitting here. And then I've got a few different uh, mandrel bends. That is a 6-inch center line radius, 4-inch, 
three inch and then a two inch. And again, the center line radius is basically the radius of this bend marked at the center and then this from the center, say here, and then the center line of the pipe. So in this case, that's like a two inch radius, three inch, four inch, and then six inch. So I just got one of each for now, uh, just as a sample. But when I'm modeling this up, the Ice Engine Works modeling kit has different radius plastic pieces that you would use based on what you need. Certainly gonna have to buy a heck of a lot more than that once I figure out the quantity of material I'm gonna need. And that's the great part about this Ice Engine Works system is when you model it up, you simply count the number of pieces you use. Every piece represents one inch of linear uh, length of tubing. You count it up, you can figure out how many bends you need, the quantity, etc. so you don't buy you don't buy too much material or you don't buy enough when you're in the middle of a project. So that's the cool thing about this modeling system as well. So let me show you that. All right, here is the Ice Engine Works modeling kit. And as I mentioned, this is the one and three quarter inch kit. I think they make uh, one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarter, two, two and a quarter. They got a whole diff bunch of different uh, sizes here. but. Uh, in the kit comes basically uh, all these different bags. I've got one, three, five bags of different pieces. Um, you've got straight pieces there as well as, and I've got these marks, these bags. Uh, four inch CLR, centerline radius, as well as three inch, two inch, and six inch. Uh, all right here um, so again you just you just use these blocks one piece one piece represents one inch one linear inch of material and as you put these things together the goal here is is to use these alignment arrows so as long as every piece you add those arrows are lined up that represents uh, one piece effectively Anytime you're putting pieces together and the arrows don't line up, that represents a place where you need to cut a piece of tubing because you're changing the, the uh, angle, if you will. So again, I'll show you this more once I get to putting in pieces. It can be confusing to start, but um, it is pretty straightforward once you, once you start putting these uh, pieces together. But you obviously want to minimize the number of cuts that you have to make uh, as well. So that's gonna be the trick along, uh, along the way. The other thing I'm gonna try to do is make these uh, runners, each runner, so I've got five on each side, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and make them equal length. So the collector, the merge collector, will sit somewhere out here in the chassis. And so the idea is for all each of the five uh, runners, exhaust runners, that the length of the pipe is equal length from the motor to the collector. Um, so it's going to require some uh, interesting and creative routing here to achieve that goal. And the reason you want to do that is for the exhaust pulses. You want to time the pulses of the exhaust so that when one pulse goes by, it's actually sucking um, uh, from the previous uh, piston fire. To, again, get get all the exhaust out of there. It's, it's basically an exhaust efficiency mechanism uh, when you can time those pulses. And to time the pulses, you obviously want uh, each runner to be equal length. So we're gonna give that a shot as, uh, as best we can. So let's start cutting up some tube and uh, get this party started.
I've got the uh, short one inch tubes tacked in there. As you saw, again, first couple tacks, like that one there, a little hot. Um, didn't have the TIG heat adjustment right. Uh, so in areas where I burned through, I did not back purge this. I will when I weld the pipes proper, but just for these tacks, I did not back purge. So I just went and ground off uh, where I did bust through just a little bit with some sugaring, but um, most of these others, these other tacks are okay, but. So broke the ice, first welds on uh, these flanges, just two tacks on each side. That should be enough to hold that together while I start the modeling process. Ultimately, what I'm gonna do is on the outside, I'll just run a small bead, maybe a one inch bead on each side where I've got the tacks, where these uh, flanges are a little bit thicker. Um, but what I'm gonna do is actually do a full bead on the inside. I'll flip these over and weld the inside uh, of the flange completely to seal it 100%. So anyways, uh, let's keep it rolling. Take a look. 545.5 pounds. 